Imagine if your app could bring dynamic content and useful information to your user's wrist every day. We're going to explore creating dynamic watch faces from within your phone app. This opens up a whole new range of possibilities for engaging with your users. Watch faces are the most exciting surface on smartwatches. They are full of information to help the user. But more than that, they are a very personal surface that allows the user to express their individuality and they're the most visible surface on your wrist. Isn't it about time that you started to use that? So watch faces are great, but once you've chosen one, it's kind of fixed. And if you want a new one, you have to choose or download another. Wouldn't it be cool to have something that was a bit more dynamic? Like changing the styling of the watch face based on a photo of your outfit, or featuring a heat map of your recent workouts that updates after every run. Building dynamic watch faces within your app opens up no end of possibilities. Today, we're going to demonstrate adding dynamic watch faces to the Androidify app. To do this, we're going to use the new Watch Face Push API, which is part of Wear OS 6. If you're not familiar with Androidify, it's our app that uses AI to create an Android avatar from a selfie. We're going to extend the Androidify functionality to allow the user to put their avatar onto a watch face too. Let's take a look at what the flow will look like for the user. Once the user has generated their avatar, they tap to transmit it to the watch. After a few seconds, the user then grants Androidify permission to set the watch face, and the watch face then becomes active. Androidify creates the watch face on the fly, using the avatar the user just generated. So there's a lot going on there to make this happen. Let's first take a look at the high-level picture. On the phone, the avatar generated from your selfie is combined with a watch face template. This template was created using our Watch Face Designer plugin within Figma, which produces the Watch Face Format resources. The resources and avatar are combined and packaged into an APK. This then goes through the Watch Face Push validation checks to create a validation token. The token and APK are transmitted across to the watch using the data layer APIs. Once received on the watch, the Watch Face Push API is used to install and set the new watch face and the watch face is ready. This demonstrates how you can take custom data on the phone side, package it up, and within seconds have it displayed as a unique watch face. Having seen how this works at a high level, let's explore each part of the process in detail. The first thing to consider is the watch face itself. This is written in watch face format, and actually, we design it using Watch Face Designer. If you're a Figma user, then you'll be right at home with Watch Face Designer, as it's a Figma plugin. Watch Face Designer allows you to select which parts of the design are the clock elements and define their behavior, and then export the watch face directly in watch face format. In building Androidify, we took those watch face format resources and included them as assets in the Androidify app as a series of watch face templates. Once the user creates their avatar, it's combined with the resources from the watch face template and packaged into a watch face format APK. The APK is now a fully functioning watch face. But before the phone can send it to the watch, the app needs to do some validation. This validation step checks that the XML syntax is correct, that the APK contains only the expected files, and other checks, such as the performance of the watch face itself. The Watch Face Push API on the watch will only accept validated APKs, so this is an essential step. To perform the validation, the phone app uses the Android version of the validator library. There are alternative versions for JVM and command line use. Here's an example of performing the validation as used in Androidify. First, the validator is created and the Watch Face APK passed in, as well as the parent package name. Successful validation results in a token being produced. In Androidify, there should be little chance of failure. The watch face code itself is not changing for each new watch face, other than the substitution of a new image. When there are failures, the app would need to handle each one, most likely reporting the issue to the user. 
Generally, these failures are terminal. Incorrectly structured XML, invalid files within the APK, and so on, which would require the developer to consider how they are packaging up the APK. To transmit the watch face APK to the watch, the data layer APIs are used. In actual fact, we use three different clients here, each part of the data layer API from the play services wearable dependency. Let's take a look at each in turn. First of all, how does the phone app know there's a watch connected and whether it has Androidify on it? That's where the capability client comes in. We define a capability in the Wear OS app and then listen for this capability in the phone app. In the cases where the capability is not detected, we offer the user the option to install the Wear OS app. This helps smooth the onboarding flow for new users. Once the phone has determined that there is a Wear OS watch with the app installed, it uses the message client to initiate a transfer request. Message client facilitates remote procedure calls, so the phone asks the watch whether it can start a new watch face transfer. The watch app has registered a service that listens for the request from the phone, meaning that the app does not need to be running on the watch at the time. The watch app responds with whether the transfer can start, which allows the phone to start sending the actual APK. For the APK transmission, the app uses channel client. This client is designed for streaming data, including potentially quite large assets, such as APKs. To send the watch face to the watch from the phone, Androidify uses the send file method, which efficiently streams the contents of a file across an open channel. Similarly, on the watch side, when a channel is opened in the wearable listener service, the receive file method is called to stream the contents of the channel into a temporary file. So now the APK has been received by the watch app. This is where the new watch face push API is used. The API provides ways to list, install, update, and delete watch faces, so long as those watch faces belong to the calling app. Every watch face must follow a naming convention. This ensures there is no potential for clashes between apps and their watch faces, nor clash with the Play Store. So for Androidify, where the package name is com.android.developers.androidify, each watch face must use this package name convention shown here, with the watch face push separator between the main package name and a unique name. In the case of Androidify, a unique ID is generated from a hash of the avatar image in order to create a new package name for each time a watch face is created, as shown in this example. In Androidify, we first check to see whether a watch face is already present. This is because each app has a maximum number of watch faces that it can install, known as slots. If there are remaining slots available, the app can install the watch face. However, if there are no remaining slots, the app has to replace an existing watch face. And on Wear OS at the moment, each app has a maximum slot count of one. So that means it's a one in, one out situation. This example obtains the ID of that slot and replaces the contents with the new watch face. Finally, once the watch face is installed, Androidify uses a new permission to set the watch face as the active watch face. This streamlines the end-to-end -end process. Once the user has granted the permission, the set watch face as active method can be used only once. This is because it is intended for that initial setup process, not for repeated use. And there we have it, an end-to-end -end demonstration of creating a custom watch face using Androidify and deploying it to the watch. There are a number of key benefits we've seen today. Androidify shows how you can programmatically create a watch face and get it from the phone to the watch in seconds. We use the Androidify avatar created by the user, but you could incorporate any type of data to make the watch face personal, relevant, and timely. Your app can also initiate the flow to set the active watch face, bringing your watch face front and center. Whether you're a watch face designer or an app developer, Let's see what you can do with the Watch Face Push API. Take a look at the Androidify code, and we look forward to seeing the creative ways you can bring watch faces to your users.